Thank you for viewing this brief required annual training on stormwater management at the State of Hawaii Department of Transportation airports. Please ensure that you complete the survey questions and send training rosters to the DOTA environmental section once you have finished viewing this presentation. This training presentation serves several purposes. First of all, the DOTA must ensure that all users of airport property comply with applicable environmental regulations, including tenants and employees. Additionally, this class will present various best management practices, or BMPs, and spill response methods that can be applied to reduce impacts to stormwater runoff and ultimately to state waters. The DOTA would also like for tenants to be aware of other airport environmental programs, such as the Construction Program and the Environmental Management System, or EMS, so that applicable procedures can be applied when necessary. As we proceed through this training presentation, please keep in mind that folders with red frames are examples of absent or incorrect BMP application. Stormwater pollution can occur when rainwater comes into contact with pollutants left on the ground. Pollutants can come from many sources, including vehicle or aircraft leaks, material spills, trash, lavatory waste, or even from excess dirt on paved areas of the facility. As the stormwater sheet flows over the ground, these pollutants are picked up by the rainwater and can be carried away into the storm drain system. These systems may consist of various drainage structures such as drain inlets, underground pipelines, and canals. All drainage systems eventually discharge to the ocean without any treatment. Therefore, it is vital to control potential pollutants before they enter the storm drain system and end up in our streams and oceans. Pollutants can be controlled by implementing BMPs. There are two forms of BMPs. The first is a structured device or physical system that is installed to treat stormwater, such as these nets that are installed in a drainage canal to capture trash and other debris. These structural BMPs are a requirement of the airport post-construction program and more information may be obtained from the HNL Stormwater Management Program Plan or SWAMP Section D. The second type of BMPs are operational or procedural practices. These are actions that may be implemented to reduce the potential for pollutants to impact the stormwater runoff. Examples of these BMPs include picking up trash, storing products indoors, or inspecting vehicles for leaks. These operational BMPs will be the focus of today's training. There are many different BMPs that have been developed by the Environmental Protection Agency and other agencies. Therefore, each facility should implement BMPs that are specific to their particular activities. At the Honolulu International Airport, tenants have been provided with specific BMPs in their Stormwater Pollution Control Plans, or SWPCP, or BMP plans. Lihue, Kahului, and Molokai airports have been provided with an airport-wide SWPCP, which is available at the website listed. For all airports, DOTA environmental health specialists will evaluate facilities based on BMPs found in the Inspection and Enforcement Manual. The first thing to do when selecting BMPs is to consider activities at your facility that may affect the stormwater runoff. The BMPs applicable to airport activities generally fall into the categories listed. Examples of both satisfactory and unsatisfactory BMPs are provided on the subsequent slides. The good housekeeping BMPs are applicable to most facilities. The goal of this first BMP is to manage trash and debris in a manner that keeps it separate from the stormwater runoff. The photos on this slide provide some examples of improper trash storage. In particular, the photo on the left shows a trash bin that has been positioned too close to a storm drain and was not covered. The result of the waste being stored in this manner was that the rainwater entered the bin and then discharged the waste from the bottom of the bin. The applicable BMP that should have been implemented is to store waste away from storm drains and to keep waste bins covered. The photo on the right shows a bin that has been overfilled which has prevented the bin cover from closing. Trash and other debris left outside of the bin and uncovered may impact the stormwater runoff. The applicable BMP would be to ensure that waste bins are regularly emptied and prevent dumpsters from being overfilled. The next good housekeeping BMP involves ensuring that facility storm drains and associated waterways are kept clean. The photos at the top of the slide show how trash may enter a storm drain and be carried to the ocean. Therefore, an applicable BMP is to conduct regular inspections and removal of accumulated debris from the exterior portions of the facility. Ensure that you are aware of the location of storm drain inlets or waterways near your facility so that they can be protected from facility activities. Those areas should also be included in regular facility cleanups. 
Additionally, if storm drains are particularly close to facility operations, such as maintenance areas, you may consider installing a treatment device BMP, such as the berm pictured under item number 3. However, if these devices are utilized, ensure that they are properly maintained. BMPs that are not maintained can themselves become pollutants in the stormwater runoff. As a part of the regular facility cleanup mentioned in the last slide, sediment and other debris should be removed using a broom or a vacuum. The fine sediment especially can be easily carried away in the stormwater and present a hazard to Hawaii's coral reefs. Ensure that a water hose is not used when cleaning a facility as wash waters may also impact the receiving waters. Good housekeeping BMPs are varied depending on facility activities, so be proactive and consider how you can protect the stormwater. Consider using drain covers or other protective devices during activities. Contact DOTA if you notice that storm drains are filling with debris for cleaning. Ensure that your workers are knowledgeable of facility BMPs. They will be asked during inspections whether they have had training and which BMPs they are responsible for implementing. Also, conduct your own inspections of BMPs to ensure that they are effective before an illicit discharge occurs. These photographs show the reasons that good housekeeping BMPs are so necessary. These photographs were taken from websites discussing the Great Pacific Garbage Patch located north of the Hawaiian Islands. Researchers say that the majority of the trash present is plastics that have been carried away in stormwater runoff. Plastics are particularly harmful because they do not decompose. The picture of the deformed turtle is a result of the animal getting caught in a plastic ring while it was smaller and then being unable to get free as its body grew. Also the birds and other wildlife may try to eat the debris which ultimately leads to their death. Through implementing BMPs such as those for good housekeeping, we can ensure that we are not adding to the trash situation that is so harmful to the environment. The next category of BMPs are for vehicle, equipment, and aircraft washing. Washing activities should be conducted in a designated wash rack area if one is available. Wash racks are typically designed to contain the wash water and direct it towards an oil water separator where it is treated prior to discharge in the sanitary sewer. When washing, attempt to use as little water as possible to accomplish the task and ensure that it is contained within the system. Any wash water that is not contained in the wash rack may be discharged into the storm drain system. Often, discharges occur when wet vehicles and equipment leave the contained washing area. Allow the equipment to dry as much as possible in the wash rack prior to exiting and locate wash racks away from the storm drains to prevent these discharges. Also, consider the detergent being used, as some may not be compatible with the oil water separator. In areas where a designated wash rack is not available, there are several alternative BMPs that can be applied. The goal of these alternative BMPs are to prevent the wash water with its potential pollutants of soap, dirt, metals, and oils from entering the storm drain system. This can be effectively achieved by containing the wash water. There are some systems, such as the one pictured, that will utilize a wet vac to contain and remove the wash water. Other methods may include a paved, bermed area that allows for evaporation of the wash water. Otherwise, consider using the bucket and sponge method which allows for the bulk of wash water, including potential pollutants, to be contained inside the wash bucket. Then the contents of the wash bucket can be disposed of in the sanitary sewer. Dry washing using a chemical and a rag to wipe down equipment is another BMP to consider when washing is required. This method does not involve water and therefore there is no risk of discharge to the storm drain system. Fueling BMPs consider regulations from the NPDES program as well as the Spill Prevention Control and Countermeasure or SPCC program. For both programs, the airport's inspectors will be looking to ensure that adequate secondary containment has been provided for the fuel tank. The secondary containment may consist of a double-walled tank, a bermed area, or a polyethylene container. The containment must be sized to hold the contents of the largest tank plus freeboard for rain if stored outdoors. Operational BMPs that should be implemented include inspecting hoses and nozzles prior to use for any cracks where a release may occur, staying vigilant during filling operations so that any releases are readily identified and corrected, and ensuring that the tank is not topped off. Space should be left in the tank to allow for expansion. When filling small or handheld equipment, ensure that secondary containment is provided for the operation. In the photo provided, a drip pan was utilized to fill small gasoline cans so that any drips would not impact the ground. 
There is a great probability that releases will occur from fueling areas and therefore an applicable BMP would include storing a spill kit in the area for quick response as well as testing the emergency shutoff to ensure that it will function properly when it is needed to stop a release from the fuel tank. Fuel trucks are regularly used at the airport for fueling aircraft. These trucks must have a spill kit on board and personnel must be well versed in responding to spills that may occur from these activities. When not in use, these fuel trucks must be stored in secondary containment. The driving containment system pictured here is most often used to satisfy the secondary containment requirement. This category of BMPs is specifically for auto body shops. There are many potential contaminants associated with auto body work and therefore the first BMP is to ensure that these activities are conducted indoors or undercover so that these potential pollutants are not impacting stormwater runoff. This is the same reason that painting operations must be done inside a paint booth or potential pollutant discharges are contained. Often, vehicles that require auto body work may be damaged. Therefore, it is vital to inspect the vehicle and place drip pans to capture leaks until repairs are completed. A particular threat to stormwater from auto body work is the generation of dust from sanding operations. Due to its small size, the sanding dust is easily carried away during the next storm event. As noted in the pictures on the right, sanding debris can be tracked outdoors and end up in drainage ways that eventually lead to the ocean. Therefore, it is important that auto body shops regularly sweep and vacuum up the sanding dust. An additional BMP to consider is the implementation of tools that have filter bags to capture a larger portion of the dust before it is discharged. Auto body shops may also conduct vehicle washing, material storage, and waste management activities which should adhere to the BMPs that are described in this presentation and or their BMP plan. These BMPs apply to the maintenance and repair of aircraft, vehicles, and equipment. It is important to keep equipment in good condition so that equipment fluids are not released to the environment. Conduct regular equipment inspections for leaks and repair as necessary. If a leak cannot be repaired immediately, use a drip pan of sufficient capacity to contain the leaking fluid. It is also important to ensure that the drip pan is regularly cleaned out. Please note that leaking aircraft, vehicles and equipment are not allowed to be parked overnight on airport common use areas without appropriate drainage controls and prior approval from the airport's district manager. Consider designating parking spots for vehicles at your facility so that oil stains on the ground are more easily linked to a particular vehicle. Additionally, ensure that maintenance records are kept so that patterns can be identified and equipment that regularly has releases can be decommissioned or replaced. Salvage equipment includes those items that are no longer working and are not planned to be repaired. When storing salvage equipment, ensure that proper BMPs are implemented. This includes removing fluids and batteries so that releases will not occur to the environment. Additionally, if vehicles or equipment begin to rust, they must be disposed of or placed in a covered area where the rust will not impact the stormwater runoff. Maintenance activities should be conducted indoors or under covered areas. Additionally, maintenance areas should be located away from storm drains so that responders have the opportunity to clean spills prior to reaching the drainage system. Also ensure that fluids removed from equipment are transferred to designated storage containers promptly. The storage containers must be labeled, closed, and placed within secondary containment. Materials stored at your facility may impact stormwater runoff and therefore should be kept indoors or in a covered area. If materials must be stored outdoors, protect them from stormwater runoff by placing them on pallets, using tarps, or another similar method. Also, secondary containment is required for all liquids and batteries. Secondary containment can take many forms as long as it will hold the contents of the container. Pictured here are a spill pallet, an overpacked drum, a tank with double wall construction, a polyethylene tub for mobile storage tanks, and a flammable storage locker, all which constitute secondary containment. The secondary containment must be large enough to hold all the contents of the largest container stored as well as additional room for rainwater. Ensure that secondary containment is kept free of accumulated rainwater or product. Once the secondary containment device is filled, it can no longer contain additional releases from containers stored in that area. Rainwater may be discharged from the secondary containment provided that there are no contaminants present. For example, if an oil drum is stored on a spill pallet outside, the stormwater in the spill pallet must not have a sheen. Then a designated person may empty the spill pallet onto the ground and record the discharge in their stormwater pollution control plan or other log. 
For larger secondary containment that may be equipped with a discharge valve, it must be kept locked unless being utilized by the designated party. Please note that if product is present in the secondary containment, it must not be discharged. Other material storage BMPs include maintaining a list of chemicals at the facility along with the safety data sheets. Keeping an inventory will assist in preventing employees from overpurchasing items and also assist in ensuring that items are utilized prior to their expiration date. Both of these practices will reduce the generation of waste from material storage. Facilities should also consider alternatives for hazardous chemicals such as biodegradable solvents. Thus, if a release does occur to the environment, it will not cause such a significant impact. It is also vital to conduct regular inspection of material storage areas. Ensure that containers are compatible with the materials stored and that they are still in good condition. Additionally, all chemical containers must be labeled. Even if the container is empty, then it must be labeled empty. In the photo shown, the inspector would have written a violation for the storage of these 55-gallon drums since they are not provided with secondary containment. However, since each drum is properly labeled empty, in this case with a sticker, the storage practice was appropriate and no violation was written. Aggregate material may also be stored at the facility such as stockpiles of gravel or dirt. These aggregate materials may be carried away in the stormwater runoff and therefore appropriate BMPs include containing the stockpiles. There are many different types of containment such as concrete walls, jersey barriers, silt fences, berms, or tarps. Scrap metal is also a concern because over time the material can rust and rust represents a pollutant in stormwater runoff. Therefore, store scrap metal under cover and consider disposing of the material before it begins to rust. Pesticides can include herbicides, such as Roundup, that are used to control weeds on the facility, as well as insecticides, such as Raid. These products are harmful if discharged to the storm drainage system, since they will also work to kill aquatic life. Therefore, applicable BMPs include storing pesticides and application equipment in secondary containment. Also, applicators should check the weather conditions and ensure that pesticides are not used during high winds or prior to a rain event. When the pesticides are used, a log should be retained that includes the date of the application, the location where it was used, and the amount of pesticide that was applied. This log should be provided to the DOTA environmental section for their reporting requirements. Additionally, the Department of Health has issued new regulations under HAR 1155 regarding the use of pesticides. In general, these regulations will apply only if pesticides are used in or near a water body. Therefore, the DOTA has issued the rule that pesticides are not to be used within 6 feet of a water body. Please consult the DOTA environmental section with questions regarding this directive. When a painting project is conducted at your facility by your employees or by a subcontractor, ensure that BMPs are implemented. Specifically, the painted area should be contained so that drips are easily cleaned up. The top photograph shows personnel using a tarp to capture any drips that may occur during these operations. The paint should be stored and mixed over secondary containment. Then if a release occurs, it is contained and will not impact the stormwater runoff. When the painting operation is completed, the brushes and other instruments may be cleaned by scraping off the excess paint and washing the brush into a bucket or the sanitary sewer. The goal with the paint cleanup is to prevent it from entering the storm drain system. Most paints can be disposed of by drying them out, bagging them, and placing them with the general rubbish. However, oil-based paint should be disposed of as hazardous wastes. Solid waste storage and disposal is a broad topic and may be enforced under many additional regulations other than those described in the NPDES program. You should be aware of those regulations and always follow the stricter implementation of the regulations if there is a conflict. The list provided here are general BMPs that may be applied to solid waste. Consider using the entire product prior to disposal. If the container is empty, then there is a reduced chance that it will impact the stormwater runoff. Retain the original label and or safety data sheet since that will provide specific information about storage and disposal procedures. Also, consider reducing material purchases to only those things that are required for the task so that fewer potential wastes are generated when excess materials are not used. Recycle items whenever it is possible, such as scrap metal and batteries. It is vital to inspect waste storage areas to look for releases and to ensure that waste containers are in good condition, closed, and properly labeled. Many maintenance activities at the airport generate used oil. BMPs for used oil include storing it within a secondary containment device that is indoors or undercover. 
The used oil container should be structurally sound and properly labeled by removing all other markings and adding the words used oil. Additionally, the container should be closed when not in use, such that if it were to tip over, the waste would not be spilled. When disposing of the used oil, ensure that a record of the disposal is retained. Airport inspectors may ask to view these records to ensure that wastes are managed appropriately. Hazardous wastes are another waste category that is heavily regulated. You must first determine if the wastes generated at your facility are hazardous. Please refer to the 40 CFR 261 for the definition of hazardous wastes. If hazardous wastes are stored at your facility, ensure that the wastes are not mixed. BMPs for storing hazardous wastes include keeping them indoors or undercover, ensuring that they are within secondary containment if liquid, and labeling them properly with the words hazardous waste and the accumulation start date. Ensure that wastes are disposed within the appropriate time frames depending on the facility generator size and maintain the disposal manifest for three years. Airport inspectors may ask to see copies of these manifests to verify proper waste disposal. Universal waste includes hazardous waste items such as lamps, batteries, bulk pesticides, and any mercury-containing equipment. If universal waste is stored at your facility, it must be placed in a structurally sound container and labeled with the words universal waste and the accumulation start date. These items must be recycled within one year and disposal documentation retained for airport inspectors. Please note that broken lamps must be handled as hazardous waste. Many facilities are equipped with oil water separators and they must be cleaned at least annually. The accumulated grease and debris must be removed to ensure that the device will remain effective at treating wastewater. These maintenance events must be logged and may be reviewed by airport inspectors. Facilities that engage in the servicing of aircraft may also need to implement triturator usage BMPs. Please note that there is a separate triturator training that must be provided to laboratory waste operators. Contact the airport environmental health specialist for a copy of this required training. In general, when handling laboratory waste, operators should ensure that hose connections are not leaking and be present during the offloading process to respond to any releases that may occur. Once at the triturator, laboratory vehicles should ensure that the vehicle is properly aligned over the triturator pit prior to discharging the waste. While at the triturator, operators are not permitted to wash the exterior of the truck. The triturators are not designed to contain this wash water and it may run off into the storm drain system. For proper vehicle washing techniques, please refer to the previously mentioned washing BMPs. If a spill does occur while at the triturator, ensure that it is cleaned promptly. Spill may be cleaned up using a disinfectant, rags, and or a broom. Please ensure that kitty litter is not used to clean lavatory waste spills as it may damage the triturator system. Spills are a common way that pollutants are discharged from a facility to the storm drain system. Employees at your facility should be particularly well versed in preventing and responding to spills that may occur and protecting the storm drain system. Consider running a practice scenario or drill to ensure that employees are competent in spill response. Additionally, every facility must have a spill kit. The spill kit should contain personal protective equipment or PPE for employees to wear while cleaning the spill such as gloves and goggles, a plastic bag or other container for disposal, non-sparking tools such as a broom, and some type of absorbent. This spill kit should be labeled and located near an area of the facility where spills are likely to occur, such as the fueling or material storage area. Consider posting emergency phone numbers for employees. Every facility should have a designated emergency coordinator who will ensure that spills are properly cleaned and make the necessary notifications. When a spill first occurs at the facility, begin spill response by stopping your work and shutting down your equipment. Attempt to determine the source of the spill. If it is from a drum, you may be able to patch the drum or transfer the drum's contents to stop the flow of the spill. If the spill is coming from larger equipment, such as a fuel tank, you may be able to hit the emergency shutoff button to stop the flow of the spill. Additionally, if the spill is a petroleum product, shutting off vehicle engines will help to prevent ignition of the material. Alert those in the immediate vicinity of the spill so that they can evacuate as needed and also so that they will not enter the spill area and possibly track material. Then determine whether the spill is within your means to clean. If you have sufficient resources, such as trained personnel and absorbent, then begin the spill cleanup. If not, ensure that a spill response contractor is promptly notified and storm drains protected until cleanup is completed. 
When cleaning spills, begin by accessing your facility spill kit and don the appropriate PPE. Contain the perimeter of the spill to limit the area affected using berms or absorbents. Also ensure that any nearby storm drains or other waterways are protected. Allow approximately 15 minutes for the absorbent to bind to the spilled product. Ensure that the absorbent is not left for an extended period of time because they may be blown in the wind or carried away during a storm event. After the material has absorbed, sweep the area and dispose of the waste properly. For airports on Oahu, spent absorbent from petroleum spills may be double bagged and placed in the regular trash to be burned for electricity. Neighbor islands may have to treat the spent absorbent as a hazardous waste depending on the individual landfill rules. Another important component of dealing with spills is making the proper notifications. The first notification should go to your respective airport duty manager or operations control. Please review the list on the left and ensure that the number for your respective airport is in an easily accessible location. Additional notifications may be required if a spill is greater than the reportable quantity. For petroleum spills, the reportable quantity is anything greater than 25 gallons, spills left for more than 72 hours, and or spills that enter into a surface water body. In those cases, you will need to notify the National Response Center and the Department of Health. They will also require a written follow-up report detailing how the spill was cleaned. Remember that any spill not cleaned within 72 hours is considered a reportable spill to the regulatory agencies, even a small oil drip such as the one pictured here from the parked vehicle. Therefore, it is in the facility's best interest to ensure that all spills are cleaned promptly. Another component of the NPDES program is the identification of illicit discharges. Illicit discharges are considered anything that may be discharged to the storm drain system that is not composed entirely of storm water. There are some exceptions listed in the NPDES permit. However, a good rule of thumb is that only rain goes in the storm drain. The respective environmental health specialists for each airport are charged with investigating the source and stopping illicit discharges. However, they need the assistance of everyone at the airport to help identify these problems. The illicit discharge in the photograph was identified because there was an observed flow from this facility to a storm drain on the road that due to the sunny weather conditions was not attributed to stormwater runoff. If you do see a potential illicit discharge such as the one noted in the picture, please call your respective EHS. Also, as a requirement of the airport's NPDES permit, BMPs at construction sites must be properly managed. Details of the airport's environmental construction management program may be found in Swamp sections C and D and in a separate training presentation that is available at the website listed. If you are planning construction activities at your facility, you must comply with these procedures. In general, they include a construction plan review to ensure that BMPs are adequate for the project, that proper permits have been obtained, and that post-construction BMPs have been considered for projects over one acre. Specific forms are required for this plan review a tenant should refer to Swamp Section C prior to submittal. Once a plan is approved, the Environmental Section will perform an initial inspection to ensure that the stated BMPs have been properly implemented. No other construction work may commence until the initial BMP inspection has been passed. Then, throughout the project, the Environmental Section will conduct inspections to ensure that compliance is achieved. When violations are noted, enforcement actions may be conducted and inspection frequency may increase. Please consult with the environmental section if construction is planned for your facility. Several environmental regulations govern DOTA's properties and facilities and require the implementation of BMPs such as those discussed in this presentation. Specifically, the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES, is a requirement of the Clean Water Act under 40 CFR 122, as well as Hawaii Administrative Rules 1155. The Honolulu International Airport has an individual NPDES permit for its storm drainage system. As a part of the requirement for the NPDES was the development of the swamp, which includes BMPs that must be implemented at the airport. Furthermore, stormwater pollution control plans, or BMP plans, were prepared for each tenant's specific site conditions. So ensure that you are familiar with those plans and BMPs. At Lihue, Kahului, and Molokai, there is a general NPDES permit and the DOTA has provided an airport-wide stormwater pollution control plan with BMPs specific to those particular airports. In addition, all airports are required to implement BMPs per the airport policy as well as the consent decree that was drafted between the Environmental Protection Agency and the DOT. 
Specific BMPs may also be found in the Tenant Inspection and Enforcement Manual available online. Another requirement of the Consent Decree is the implementation of an Environmental Management System, or EMS. As a part of the EMS, everyone at the airport must be aware of the environmental policy that was signed by the Director of Transportation. The full version of the policy is available at the DOTA website. However, the acronym COP has been created in an effort to make it easy to remember. The C stands for Continual Improvement. The O stands for Obey All Laws. The P stands for Prevent Pollution. The airport has taken the COP acronym and developed this logo and the slogan, Be a COP. Please ensure that everyone is familiar with this policy and logo as they may be interviewed during regulatory audits or airport inspections. The DOTA has the ability to conduct enforcement as defined in the Inspection and Enforcement Manual. In general, failure to comply with environmental regulations and airport procedures, including the implementation of BMPs, may result in enforcement. Enforcement actions will escalate beginning with a written warning. This may be something that the airport inspector will verbally state during their BMP inspection and then record on their inspection checklist. If the item is not corrected within the agreed upon time period, then enforcement efforts may increase to an investigation report and then to a notice of apparent violation or NAV. Once an NAV is issued, the DOTA will continue enforcement under Title 19 which could result in revoking the lease agreement and or monetary fines. Cases may also be referred to the DOH for escalated enforcement. The DOH has been delegated responsibility for administering the NPDES program from the EPA. The DOH has also granted the same enforcement abilities to the DOT Airport EHS via a Memorandum of Understanding. Once a case is referred to the EPA or DOH, they may conduct enforcement actions that result in fines. All fines are accrued on a per offense, per day schedule, meaning that if you have one violation but do not correct the violation for one year, the fine you may receive may be multiplied by 365. The Department of Health has two different categories of fines, civil and administrative. Civil fines can range up to $25,000 per offense. Administrative fines are further broken down into the categories listed. In particular, an organization can also be fined up to $1 million. In conclusion, ensure that BMPs are implemented at your facility to take care of the environment. Keeping our ocean clean is very important to our state, the economy, and our well-being. Also, implement BMPs to comply with airport and regulatory requirements. Finally, implement BMPs to avoid enforcement and fines. Thank you for viewing this presentation. If you have further questions, please contact your respective airport environmental health specialist.